Hi everyone and welcome to the book refuge and welcome to another recommendations video. Um, I recently put a question out on my community page because every month I like to make you know four to five recommendation videos mixed in with all my content because that's just what I'm here for. That's why I'm on booktube as I like getting recommendations for the books I read from other channels and from you guys and so I asked for some tropes and uh, today we're going to do an arranged marriage slash marriage of convenience um, recommendations and specifically someone had asked for in contemporary um, and I did, I'm splitting this video in half basically because also people want historical romances of convenience which I actually don't have a ton of them. Um, which is fun. Like a lot of them like are some of my favorites. So that's fun because I love, love, love either like we're forced to get married or I actually really want to marry you, but I don't want you to know that. Or we've been engaged for a really long time and it's finally time for it to happen. And I just love that. And I also love arranged marriage in contemporary too, because the reasons are usually a lot different. Um, sometimes if you're dealing with the mafia or with the very wealthy, there are still like arranged marriages for breeding purposes or money purposes. But when it gets to other kinds of marriage of convenience, I like when it is like someone's protecting the other person or something like that. I really, really like that as a trope. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'll have timestamps down below for the arranged marriage and then the historical. So if you don't care about it, um, or I mean the contemporary and the historical. If you don't care about the contemporary, you can skip to the historical, but we're gonna start with that. And we're gonna start with my queen, Katie Robert, and just get this one out of the way because can I make a recommendations video without Katie Robert? It's difficult for me. Um, the last marriage of convenience, arranged marriage one I did, also had a Katie Robert, and this time, I gotta pop her up again. And that's gonna be A Worthy Opponent by Katie Robert. This is book three in her Wicked Villain series. You can read these all as standalone. There isn't too much mention of the previous character, of these characters previously. Like you see Tink in Hades Underworld sometimes. But all of these books kind of revolve around a BDSM pleasure club that Hades owns called The Underworld. And in this book, we have Tink, who she had sold herself, kind of, or put herself into a working contract with Hades for the last couple of years to escape her abusive boyfriend, Peter Pan. And the way of this world's run is kind of mobbish. Like, there's different territories that are run by um, not necessarily just the villains, but by different fairy tale characters. And so the, the Disney villains made sexual because aren't they though? Aren't they though? And so this one is about, <laughs> oh my God, I just love this so much. So Tink is getting kicked out of the underworld because Hades, you know, has kind of looked out for her, gave her a job, um, helped free her. Um, she is one of the sassiest submissives you are ever gonna find. I love that. I love when you just have this woman who is wild and crazy but wants to submit. And Hook is one of, like, he is a cinnamon roll dom, which I just love too. I mean, not completely cinnamon roll, but with Tink, he is. And so he makes a deal with Tink. He's been running Peter Pan's, like, he kicked Peter Pan out of their territory, but now Peter is back. And now that Tink is getting kicked out of the underworld, she is vulnerable. And Peter, who was very manipulative and abusive to her, is going to be coming back to get her. And so Hook proposes to Tink and says, with you by my side, we can control this territory. And I'll keep you safe from Peter. And we'll have some kinky bedtimes together. So, yes. Then I have to bring up Bound by Hatred by Cora Riley. This is actually book three in her series and you could jump into this one with book three if you wanted to because 
these books do a lot of overlapping. In fact, it's something that if you're binging them like I did, I read all like 13 books she has out within like three days and there's a lot of overlapping to the point that it gets a little bit annoying. But one char two characters we've been watching through this series, this is a mob series, um, is Mateo. I hope I'm picking the names right because it's Mateo and Gianna, I think. Maybe I'm totally getting the names wrong, but I know that I love them. It's just lots of couple names in my head. And this is one we've been watching. And the girl, she ran away. So she's been on the run for, I think, six months from her family because she doesn't want to be a part of the mob anymore. She doesn't want to be a part of the outfit. I think they're the outfit. Um, and so she's on the run. And she's supposed to marry Mateo, and she does not want to and they've had this really like sparky relationship in the other two books and he has been sent to find her and it's double-edged number one she's his and he completely wants her he made this arrangement of their marriage happen because he wanted her and also the family believes that he'll be the most brutal with her and will punish her for running away and embarrassing them and so Mateo knows that he needs to find her before anyone else does because he loves her and he wants her and he also doesn't want one of the other families to find her and use them against. So there is a lot, of, there's a reason this is called Bound by Hatred because this is one of the most delicious hate to loves I've ever seen because it's extra brutal because it's a mob and it's also extra passionate because they know that there's sexual chemistry, like she knows she's attracted to him. And he just continually tries to prove to her how much he cares while still trying to be the man and like not arouse suspicion that he's actually completely in love with this girl. And she just feels like Mateo represents everything that she wants to run from. And it's very interesting to me. I find it very interesting and I love it. So then I want to talk about The Initiation by Nikki Sloan. This is the first in a trilogy that's a trilogy plus one. And this is about this girl who she is being basically sold to another family. They are called, this series is called Filthy Rich Americans. And she's being sold into a relationship with this other, um, with this other family to this man and the whole thing with this is that this is in business this isn't the mob but this is in business and the father of her future father-in-law he has a thing for her this isn't that kind of thing but it also is like he wants her to marry his son because he wants her under his roof and he expects that maybe he'll be getting something out of her as well hmm I really like him. He's a, he's a dirty daddy, that's for sure. But there's also a beautiful relationship between the couple in this book, but it is a relationship with a lot of lies and secrets going on, and it's a series with a lot of, like, deals, dirty dealing. It is very sexy, almost erotic, but also suspenseful. Like, there is some things going on. And like I said, this dad, not the greatest guy ever, he gets his own book later on that is literally called The Redemption, which is really great. But this arranged marriage is one where I feel like they become a team together. Like, they know they have chemistry. It's one of those where they're like, let us be on each other's side. Now, how that all works out is complicated. However, it was really fun to watch happen and to see how they spark off of each other and work together. It's super good. Then I want to talk about Confess, and I believe this is A. Zavarelli. And this one is really fun. So this girl, she is a confidence trickster. She's a grifter, and she has been making money for her and her sister by getting men to love her and then catching them doing something wrong and taking all their money. So think Heartbreakers, the Sigourney Weaver and Jennifer Love Hewitt movie. Um, but she gets caught, and so she gets grifted 
in a different way. So we meet this. This is also an age gap. This is an older man, and he's a lawyer. Um, he's come. He's come from the rough side of the tracks, and he likes to take care of people. But he's also kind of a daddy dom. I'll say that too, because what he does is he coerces this woman into marrying him. And he says, you're going to stay married to me for a year. You're going to finish your schooling. You're going to give up grifting. And at the end of this, you'll get a settlement and you and your sister can start your life over. And she just doesn't want to do this. She likes how her life is going. She likes tricking these men. She likes feeling desirable. But he's like, you either do this or I'm going to make sure you go to prison for the things that you've done to people. And so she doesn't really have a choice. And he really, it's one of those where... I really like when um, elements of BDSM are used to help someone. And granted, this one is a little twisted because she's not willingly entering into this. Like, don't consider this BDSM. This would be a little higher up of a level where, like, if you like BDSM, you'll see how this man is using elements of it to help this person. But it's not a consensual BDSM relationship because she doesn't agree to that part of it but the kinds of like punishments that happen yes there's some fun sexy ones that happen but it's also <laughs> she likes it too which of course they do it's a romance novel they like it but there is some suspense elements in this one as well this book ripped my heart out and I was not prepared for it. I loved it so much. And I just really liked the element of this coerced marriage and then that he was doing it to help her. Um, but it definitely doesn't feel that way to her. So I like that. Um, and then I want to talk about Marriage for One. Um, this one was real popular a few months back. Um, this is another one of like, this is more of a marriage of convenience where this girl, she has like been, I think it has to do with, she has a coffee shop she's wanting to put up and she's in some financial trouble and he's the lawyer. This is the second one where the guy's a lawyer. And so he agrees to marry her so that she can keep the deed to this place. Um, and then they're just planning to be married for a certain amount of time, like one of those again. And... I just think it's delicious. This is like a grumpy hero and he's, it's all going to be like, here's your life. You do this. Here's my life, but he can't do it. Like he wants to help with everything. And so I just love that. Like she's putting this coffee shop together. She's going to do it herself. He's providing some of the money, you know, in this space. Um, and he, she's going to go to work events with him. Like it's one of those marriage of convenience. Like he's getting egged to like get married and he wants to become, I think like partner in his firm and having a wife will help him do that. But this one has some other fun tropes. I like, like, um, sick bed help, you know, like she gets sick and he takes care of her. Um, and he ends up showing up at her coffee shop and helping her build things because when he gets done with work, that's just what he wants to do. And slowly they are falling for each other and it's adorable it's so cute so all right now i'm gonna skip to the historicals so if you are only here for the contemporaries bye bye but my bread and butter for arranged marriages is really historical they're my favorite i definitely enjoy them in a contemporary setting but historical is where it's at for me so let us go through this list that i have here so we'll mix this up i'm, I'm gonna start with the clay pez because she's queen um and with one that you have probably heard of a bajillion times if you like clay pez and so let's start with devil in winter by lisa clay pez this is a marriage of convenience that makes me burn and it also has the head rake himself um sebastian saint vincent who is the devil and if you're reading this series in order this is third book in the wallflower series and I had read books after this in a different series and I had heard everyone talking about Sebastian but if you read the series in order you're gonna hate this guy and understand why he is devil because he has previously kidnapped someone he has previously protect like said he would assault someone but because he's de desperate to get married and we know that 
Evie, we have Evie who she is, she has a stutter, she is shy, she is sweet, but she's in trouble. Her father runs a gambling den and he's very sick. Um, he has consumption, which is tuberculosis, he's dying, and Evie's family is keeping her away from her father and her father's so sick and he doesn't want her at his gambling den so he's not really helping either and she has no power she has been abused by this family like and so she knows that Sebastian St. Vincent is desperate enough for her family's money which that's another reason why they're trying to control who she's with and who she marries and so she goes to Sebastian and he's like, hey, you know how you kidnapped my friend to marry her for her money? I have money and I also need a husband and I'm willing to marry you. I think you're hot. You think I'm hot. Let's go get married. And so they do. And they consummate the marriage to make it legal. But then she's like, we don't need this. You can go find someone else. And he gets a taste of that girl and he's like, I don't think that I need anyone else. I think my wife is what I want. And then Sebastian goes about changing every perspective you have of him. We also meet one of my favorite Clay Pest heroes ever, Cam Rohan in this book. So just so you know. But I just had to talk about this because I love how Clay Pest can turn a hero around and speaking of a hero that they can turn around also I don't even call them heroes all the time I call them her like anti-heroes or her lovable villains because they're the ones I like the best I like those boys that nobody else likes and the ones that are the most problematic are my favorite and I mean people everyone loves St. Fantine so they don't point that out as much but I was gonna rape her friend you're supposed to believe that he wouldn't actually do it but he said he would so, you know, but then I have Winterborn, marrying Winterborn. Okay, so this was only the second Lisa Claypaws I read because I started with the Ravenel series. And so in this book, we have Reese Winterborn, who we have seen same kind of situation as St. Vincent. We see him not only talk about assault, but he does kind of sort of assault, uh, assault Helen's, uh, sister-in-law. And, oh boy, oh boy. We have seen, he has been previously engaged to Helen. And now Helen is a bit of a wallflower. She's very quiet. She is easily pushed over. But she really liked Reese. And now Winterborn, think of him as a Macy character. Like, he owns department stores all over the place. He is uber rich. He fell for Helen when she nursed him back to health in the first book, and he wanted to marry her. But Helen was feeling kind of railroaded. She was feeling kind of overwhelmed by him. And so when she said, cool it, he kind of freaked out. And so that's the thing that happened with Kate, is he assaults Kate. And then Helen is like, okay. I need to go talk to him and figure this out. So the, in the first chapter of this book, Helen sneaks into his home, which is at the, the department store, and she comes to see him and she's like, hey, I didn't really want to break up our engagement. I just didn't want to do it the way that it was being planned because she had felt this great connection with him and then he just wanted to sweep her away with money. That's what he wanted to do is just throw money at it be, so he would feel worthy because he is not a duke or a lord or anything. He's just a rich guy. And she is part of the aristocracy. And so <laughs> he tells her, he's like, okay, let's do this. But he's obsessed with her, okay? He's obsessed with her. So he's like, you're not gonna leave here until I pop your cherry, because then I know that you're gonna marry me because I've been brokenhearted before. So, <laughs> I love that. I absolutely love that. And Helen is like, okay, let's do it. And then they do it. And then he then is like, okay, so we're going to get married. It's happening. And I, I love it. So this is 
almost a second chance situation, but also they weren't being their true selves the first time that they courted. And I love when they get a second chance in here. And I love Winterborn. He's in my top. Come at me. Come at me. Okay, let's switch to a Tessa real quick here. We have When a Scot Ties the Knot. Look at that cute set back there. This is book three, two, three in the Castles Ever After series. This one is, okay, there's so much to explain in, the, in this book to like do a setup. So I'll try to be quick. So we have this girl who is very, very shy. Her name is Madeline Grace Church, and she makes up a pen pal who is a Scottish man named, sorry, what's his name? Captain Mackenzie. And she makes everything up and she wrote letters to him for years. And then she pretended to break up with him and all to make her family think that she was in love and then it didn't work out. And so they would leave her alone and not make her have a season or talk to people because she's super shy. Well, Captain Mackenzie, number one being like the most popular Scottish name you could think of, he's real and his estate is in trouble. So he's been receiving, he received all these letters from this woman <laughs> because she was sending them and not think, she's like, well, these aren't going to anyone. So I can say whatever I want in this. And he actually like fell in love with her through these letters. And so... He comes back with his group of men who their lands have been like taken over because British is shit to the Scottish people. And she has been gifted a castle because that's what happens to every, to all the women in the castle ever after series. And he kind of coerces her into marrying him because he needs the money for his lands and his people who came back to nothing. After fighting for England, they had everything taken from them. And so this is another case of kind of a problematic hero where he's like, you marry me, I will let you continue to do your shy thing. She's into some stuff. I can't remember if it's like, but she has like a hobby that she really likes. And he's like, I just need your money. And this way people will leave you alone and I can restore my estate and you can be on your own and it'll be perfect. We'll never have to go to London. It's fine. And then they fall in love. So there's that. There's that series. It's so good. Throwback. I have Mr. Cavendish, I presume, by Julia Quinn. So this is actually part of a duology, which is a super cool duology. They are taking place at the same time and they're about these two men who, um, I don't want to completely ruin the surprise, but they're both considered the Duke of Wyndham for reasons. But anyway, so Thomas Cavendish, he has been arranged to be married to, sorry, let me find her name, Amelia, since she was a little girl. And just the time that they're about to get married, which she's always admired him and known that this beautiful man is going to be her husband one day and she's a proper lady and it's awesome. There comes into question his parentage and that he might not really be the Duke of Wyndham. And so her betrothal papers say that she's engaged to the Duke of Wyndham. And if that man is no longer Thomas Cavendish, she can't marry him. And, but she's got to marry somebody. And it's so good. So this is a duology. You can read either book first because they're taking place at the same time. Um, and the other one is about the other possible candidate for the Duke of Wyndham and the woman that he meets. And so it's really cool because Julia wrote these books at like the same time even. So they're scenes you'll get to see from multiple points of view. And I really loved it. These were some of the first Julia Quinns that I read. And I'm really looking forward to rereading these because I just love this. Like the opening thing for this is like, his name is Thomas, Thomas Cavendish, and he's the Duke of Wyndham, maybe. Her name is Amelia, Lady Amelia Willoughby, and she's engaged to the Duke of Wyndham, whoever that might be. That's so cool. Julia Quinn. Oh, I love her. Check this duology out, but specifically this one for this trope of arranged marriage. Then I have a Lorraine Heath that I just read recently. This is the Viscount and the Vixen. Lorraine Heath is just... She writes darker historicals, which is 
I like. I'm liking more and more because I feel like the rom-com historical start to all feel one like the other and then you read a Lorraine Heath and no Lorraine Heath is like another nor is it like any other historical you've ever read. So I love it. She also will rip your effing heart out. Just warning you. This is the third book in a trilogy. I do kind of suggest you read them in order for this one to have the most impact but you don't have to it's fine. It's just mm, the ending of this book will mean so much more to you if you've been with them the whole time. But this is the third book in the Hellions of Havisham. This one is about um, Viscount Loxley and his father has been the mad, uh, is he the Duke or the Viscount? I think his dad. But anyway, his father has been mad since his mother died and his mother died when Loxley was born. So he's watched his father kind of be half of a man and be a little bit kooky all this time and he has vowed that he's never going to love someone and he needs to get an heir eventually but he's not going to love that one. I am a sucker for this trope. I love when a hero is like, I'm never going to love anybody, which is like all historical romances. So there you go. <laughs> but his father has outmaneuvered him because he's only half crazy, everybody. He's only half crazy. He, <laughs> he has been being a pen pal with this woman named Lady Portia, just Portia. And the father has decided, decided that since his son won't get married and give him an heir, the father is going to remarry and produce an heir so that he has a spare. Since his son won't do it, he's going to do it so that the estate has an heir. The father knows that his son is going to step in and marry this woman because he'll think that this woman's trying to take advantage of him and Portia is trying to take advantage of him. She's trying to marry an old man to pass off the bastard she's carrying as this man's child. And because this guy already has a son, she's thinking, okay, well, I'm not going to be passing off my baby as the heir to this Viscountcy because he already has an heir. Well, now Loxley marries her instead because the betrothal papers just say that she will marry. Um, it doesn't, I guess it just, I can't remember what the like trick is, but literally the father set this up. Like this was all the plan. Okay. And that, that all happens in the beginning. I'm only setting this up for you. Okay. But now Portia really feels horrible because she wanted to marry this old man and like be his companion and have a home for her baby. And now the thing that she didn't want to do, she didn't want to pass her child off as a bastard son. Now she is and her child will be the heir to this. And quickly, quickly Loxley is falling for her. And when this secret comes out, it could ruin them. And in true Lorraine Heath fashion, she digs, she digs the knife in, but it's so good. And if you read this whole trilogy, they're all fabulous. The first one is called, um, well, uh, we are falling into bed with the Duke and then the Earl takes it all. And then this book and they're so good. They're so good. And you get the trivecta, you get a Duke and Earl and a Viscount. So there you go. And then the last one that I want to talk about is this is an oldie for me so I haven't reread it in a while it's on my list to reread but I have so many historicals to get through it's really hard to reread one when I want to read new ones but this one is super fun so this is called When the Duke Returns by Eloisa James and this is another case of there's been a betrothal for a very long time so there's this woman let me just check her name sorry Lady Isidore she was married by proxy to um, Simeon. So Simeon, uh, when she was very young, she was married by proxy to him and he's been overseas. Um, where was he? I think he was in India. And so they've never, they've never, um, consummated this because they were married by proxy and they've been, I think it's been a really long time and he comes home and he's kind of like ravaged by the things that he's seen. So this is a hero with PTSD. This is like a wounded hero kind of thing. And he comes back like a completely different person than when he left. And he doesn't want to saddle this beautiful, vivacious woman with the wreck of a man he is. So he's planning to come back 
give her a good settlement, but annul the marriage. And Lady Isidore is not going to let that happen because she has been married to this man for all these years and he comes back and he's a hunk. He, I love this because this is, I love when there is a historical character who like exercises because we always, it's always like, ooh, they rode horses and they were ripped, but it's like, but you see the guys like drinking and smoking and stuff. And I was like, they are not having a six pack, but we'll pretend because romance. But this is the case of like, he exercises for his health. And so he is ripped and tanned and just gorgeous because he's been living in India all this time. And so there's also that, like, she's expecting him to come back like ugly. And I don't know why she thinks that he will be, but she does. And he comes back and he's this stunning, sexy man. And he's like, yeah, I know I'm your husband, but let's get an annulment. And she's like, what? No, I'm sticking around for this. So this is a case of like, she's really trying to pursue him. Look at that. Oh my God. So I just love them. I, I love them. So there you go. I hope these were fun for you. I hope you check them out. Um, of course, send me any arranged marriages. I have a lot more that are contemporary, but they're all like the mob ones, <laughs> which I did an entire video on. Like if you really like arranged marriages and contemporary, you should really check out mob books because that's how like the mob gets them. But yeah. So thank you so much for watching this. I put up new videos three to four times a week. If you want to buy any of these books, make sure you check out my um, link down below. I have an Amazon storefront where all of my recommendations are in blocks down below so you can check them out. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.